and welcome to my workshop. Today we're going to do a bowl turning um, and we're going to do a bowl turning out of uh, a piece of this beautiful wood. This is uh, hue and pine. Um, I should get about four bowls out of that. I've got another piece of hue and pine here which is a nice knotty bit. Um, we'll save that one for a, a future project. Um, and I've also got uh, a piece of, uh, this is prepared sassafras. Now what they do is, uh, what they, they cut it, they kiln dry it um, partially, then they dip it in wax. You see both ends is coated with wax and then they uh, let it dry naturally. Hue and pine only grows in Tasmania, in the Hewitt Valley or surrounding district as well, I understand. But Tasmania in, in gen general. And it was prized by the uh, British Navy because they, they used to build boats out of it. It is, um, it has a, a lot of qualities of oak uh, and is about two thirds the weight. Uh, it's very, very dense wood, um, and at the time, 250 years ago, it was a hanging offence to cut one of these trees down, or even to claim it as your own, because uh, all these trees immediately became the property of the crown. This particular tree um, is probably uh, somewhere in the region of about 3,000 years old. So, uh, to, I mean, to buy this wood, um, it is not cheap. <laughs> now, I'd just like to mention that this video uh, is sponsored by the Margate Train. And in particular, um, one of the surrounding buildings uh, is a stockist for uh, antiques and also uh, rare woods. Uh, hence, this video is sponsored by uh, this particular um, store that uh, stocks rare woods uh, such as sassafras and uh, hue and pine and they will actually ship it uh, worldwide. <laughs> What I'm doing now is I found the centre of the piece of work and this now is the diameter, or I'm marking out the diameter of my faceplate. Now under normal circumstances what I would do is um, I would cut off the corners on my bandsaw. Um, but it's going to be rather difficult trying to mark out the circle on this side of the wood not impossible, I could do it, but uh, it, it's easier for me to sort of juggle the... Uh, I, want, I want to get the maximum good wood out of this. Now, uh, if you notice here, it's sort of split away. Um, and this is where the rim of the bowl is going to be. So I'm going to have to eventually machine down to about this level here. Um, so this is the maximum uh, diameter possible out here. So it's probably going to be a little bit narrower than that because I don't want to lose too much of this material. Uh, but I, I need to get rid of this. Thread and just hold it up and wind the thread on manually manually, I see a lot of wood turners out there, turning the motor on and winding it in with the motor. Don't do it. Okay, so we've taken off enough material there to be able to spin this around. It's going to be quite a bit off-center, not off-center, it's going to be out of balance actually. Um, so we're going to have to start off slowly, probably start turning this about uh, uh, might manage 350 to 400, 
might be able to manage 350 to 400 RPM and then we'll gradually work up to 500, 600, 700 to because uh, the faster you can spin it uh, the easier it is to machine okay um, I'll just take this opportunity um, to answer a, a personal question um, quite a few of you last summer noticed something on my ah well it's it's this okay I've got a permanent semi-permanent implant into my arm now because uh, I'm running on one kidney and uh, of course with that you get diabetes and all manner of different things and uh, to avoid me pricking my finger every hour pretty well um, there's a device on the market now that you can get which is a, a freestyle by Libra and all you do is start it up and scan and it tells you exactly what your blood reading is and uh, uh, history of it and you can upload this into your computer and then to your, your, your specialist and um, saves a lot of pain <laughs> now for this particular piece of uh, wood I am going to start to machine the outside down with my bowl gouge. Now it has two different grinds. Now this one is commonly known as an English grind. Okay, so it's uh, fairly, it's, it's not too much of a comb there. Okay, can you see that? And incidentally I grind all my chisels by hand and eye. I don't use a, a jig at all. Uh, that's the way I've always done it and uh, I sort of have a lot of success with the way I grind them. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's a traditional English grind. Now, this one is a semi-fingernail grind, okay? Now, if you notice here, it's, I'm gonna grab the other one again. See the, the difference? English, gr English grind, fingernail grind. Now, or should I say a semi uh, fingernail grind because I don't, I don't sweep this around as far as what other bowl turners do. Uh, because I, I prefer, I prefer it this way. <laughs> and uh, one day I'll do a video on how I, um, sharpen my chisels. So we're going to start with this one and we're going to um, take the high spots off and um, see in what we Now before we start turning, um, especially with Huon Pine or Jara or that type of wood and some oaks as well, it comes off very very powdery and you should wear a mask. Um, so, you know, you, you should wear all the safety gear. So if I sound a bit muffled on the output here, you'll know why. Now I've got a very light mask. Sometimes I use a heavier mask than this. But um, I'll start off with this one and see how I go. Uh, it's not too bad in the, the summer time because it doesn't fog up your glasses. In the winter time I have a lot of trouble with um, wearing masks because it does uh, tend to fog up my glasses and I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs>
trying to, oh look at that, that's beautiful. What I'm trying to do here is determine the maximum size of bowl that I can obtain out of this piece of uh, beautiful wood. And I've just now started to machine all the way around here. Unfortunately, I'm going to lose that. But I think uh, that's going to come out again on the inside of the bowl. I'll pick up a little bit on the outside here, but not much, I don't think. So now I've got to get rid of this to come down to about this level. So that's what I want to do now. So you've got to sort of pick at it a little bit at a time. And get the most out of the material that you can. Right, I've just turned now to my spindle gauge. Uh, because there's a smaller diameter piece right in the middle here, I find it uh, cuts a little better on this outer outer side, so here we go. Okay, so we've got the very base of our bowl roughed down now. So now I've got to take a little bit more off the diameter of this. Uh, now this is going to determine how, well, the, the overall diameter of our bowl. So we're going to uh, we're going to see what we're going to be left with in a minute. Okay. So now we're beginning to see and understand what the shape of our bowl is going to end up being. It's a little smaller than I hoped for, but uh, I'm still going to take it down a little bit more. But uh, we're gradually sweeping up here now. I think it's going to be a beautiful bowl, actually. Now well, let's keep going. I'm using the full both wings uh, and applying it to the material at the same time. Like that. Let's get my um now this is a finishing scraper. As you've probably detected, this wood is quite wet. It's been lying around outside quite some time, I think. Hopefully this is removing some of that frame. Have a look. Ooh, 
Nice. Oh, that is nice. Oh, still got some fry in. Oh, look at the figure in that. That's beautiful. I'm going to start doing some finishing on this now. I'm going to leave that in. Or should I take it down? I'll take it down a little tiny bit more. So I get rid of some of this fray in here. Oh, figuring that is, oh, it's going to be beautiful when it's all sanded up. A little bit of rotten wood here though. Let's get rid of that. Okay, now I've got the rough shape of the outside of my bowl. Now there's some beautiful, beautiful figure in this uh, piece of wood. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a mortise in here. Actually, I'm going to put a mortise and a tenon just to give me a double, double go at this and say in case anything goes wrong. All the way down because I'm going to use my parting off tool to go in here and do this. Just make a couple of marks a minute and then I'll face it off a bit. I got two bites of the cherry here because this is, you know, going to be an expensive piece of piece of wood and piece of bowl here. So I'm going to grip it from the center. If anything happens that uh, I have a problem with a piece of this breaking out, which could happen, I can always go back in and grip it from the outer side out here. In fact, I put a little bit more of a, a little bit more of an angle on that, and it gives me a, a double sort of bite at the cherry. I've just um, done quite a bit of sanding now on the outside of the bowl and it's come up really, really nice. And um, I've turned it around and I've got it on the chuck now, on the jaws of the chuck. Uh, so I'm now going to face this side off and face it down till we get to somewhere near here. Uh, and then we're going to scallop the inside out. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just plunge the tool in the center there and make a bit of a start and then draw it out. A little tiny bit further. Oh, actually, I'll just round that over. That'll be fine. We'll start now removing some of this uh, material on the inside and we'll finish up the outer edge then. So let's start scalloping this out. Okay, I use a combination of different methods to uh, hollow a bowl out, and that is I'll start a, start a cut going here, about an eighth of an inch deep, and I'll follow it on all the way, I'll follow it down all the way to the center of the bowl, then I'll dig it, start boring with the tip of the tool into the center, then I'll rotate the cut a red and I'll pull it back out. So I do a cut both directions, in and out. So we'll do some more of that. I have the lathe running about 800 RPM. 
So here we go. Start the cut here. Like so. Rotate the chisel round a little bit so it doesn't the chisel doesn't go too deep. You just push it down into the centre and follow the cut down in. Sometimes you can't see because it builds up. But all the way to the centre there like that. Yeah, the, the back edge here is actually stop. You use that as a bit of a break to stop it digging in too far. Okay, this is the bevel by the way. Okay, so out the other direction, push in, rotate it anti-clockwise. See, it's that way now. So I'm cutting on this edge, I'm going to draw it back out. And if it tends to dig in a bit too far, what it will naturally do is rotate out. Let me show you this first. Okay. Draw it all the way out. Okay. I can actually use both wings at the same time. So that way you're guaranteed pretty well not to get a, a, a dig at all. So do that again. So let's start the cut now. Take it all the way into the middle. No trouble with doing it that way. It builds on the up on the end of the cutter a bit. I'll dig it in and come out. Or you can use butt cut with both wings simultaneously if the material tends to dig a bit, uh, which is shear scraping. Like so. Now actually that's getting a little bit far over. I could probably go a little bit more. Whoop. I just sharpened my bowl gouge a little bit. Getting a lot of tear out with this material. More than I was expecting, but uh, we'll uh, persevere with it and uh, make a nice, continue to make a nice bowl. in the territory of uh, being a little bit too far, reach over the tool rest again. So what we're going to do is we're going to put 
like a tool that's right inside. Like all this. Okay, now I hope I'm not going to be in the way of the cameras here, but uh, you're going to have to bear with me. First. Now it starts to get a bit tricky. So here we go. Keep it your way. Incidentally, this, this wood's really wet. It makes it easier to the machine. is really going to make this bowl. And I, I've done a rough calculation of if you if you counted these growth rings all the way out, you'd find there's nearly 2,000 of them. So this tree, before it was fallen, was 2,000 years old. Now, like I say, you know, they, they don't bring them down for, you know, sort of just for the sake of bringing them down. There's a reason why they've, uh, you know, they, they're dying off and uh, it's, you've got to have a special license to actually bring them down. So, because, uh, you know, I, I do love trees, but uh, you could do something with their wood when they're at the end of their life, well, that's okay. I'm just going to take another skim here. Um, because the, the more I can take out with this finishing tool, scraper, um, you know, the less I have to do with sandpaper. So here we go, very steadily.
Isn't that a beautiful bowl? I hope you've enjoyed the video today of machining or turning a human pine bowl that is possibly 2,000 years old. If you have, please press like and subscribe to my channel and pass it on to your friends because that's how the channel grows. And uh, on my channel, there's now over 300 videos now between both my channels um, regarding wood turning, CNC milling, milling in, in general, uh, shop jobs that I do around here, laser work, and um, the associated programs, computer programs that uh, go with the CNC operated machines. Um, so thank you for joining me and it's bye for now until next time. <laughs>